When Cloud sneaking Nui Rama fly on Lake Koro to destroy all, Quick Soren Kahu Riders tree launch and great battle fought. Brave wind riding Lake Koro and come to Lake Koro defense. All prepare for battle flight. All but no nothingness tomorrow. High lifting life dawn tomorrow wish to bring happy cheer to sing song Lake Koro, but hard luck prevents her from wind riding as Lake Koro and do, leaving tree bound tomorrow on down tree ground path. Under fastest leaf runner Kongu's teaching, tomorrow learn Kahu taming. But when Rama hive growing top leaf high in dark forest, late knowing Matoran taken by Makuta's Rahi. Gone, gone, to Rama Hive by Buzz Flying Rahi. But Spirit Lift Fire Spitter Chronicler arrive in Lake Koro. Loud talk draw all seeing fright and fury back. Cunning Lake Koro and mount for up tree battle, down tree peace. But tomorrow hard fall in Bogfoot, for she fly not. When Chronicler return over rock to seek fine company for Toa heroes, high flying Lake Koro and proud stand at Leaf Dawn Crash Bang Party, and tomorrow deep think down tree. Late knowing Chronicler and bite Vines Woman tomorrow, and quiet sneak through Bald Land to Kini Nui. Happy smile with company for spirit blessed battle, but dark luck Madanui ever find dark time. Fast chase bow rock cause ever flee Lake Koro, and Deepwood Chronicler find Tamaru and Kongu, ever quick through high branch to lore, and bow rock crash wreck with boxer. Liberated sea bright Lake Koro, old bone bow rock, though ever forgotten Tamaru once more. Though fast talking Tamaru hard luck top leaf, ever smile like oak new. Tree launch second for Kongu, Tamaru seek find purpose Deepwood, tree bound wayfinder and sing song map maker. Matel's best. Tree bright Lake Koro hard fall, Tomorrow tree bound for fear dread, but proud stand tomorrow for quick dodge and true shot. Down tree swim speeding. Kongu say no nothingness and bogfoot, but tomorrow loud talk ever glad. Deep wood tomorrow secret sneak. Why? Crave need restrict free nudity. Tomorrow nudist. Bear skin for hate clothing. While Toa hero and Lake Corona and Kanohi bound. Tomorrow smash dash tradition and secret revealed. Maskless for bow rock. Laugh laugh. Kongu say slow think, but tomorrow smart plan. Other Lake Corona and wind sprint and tomorrow wrong turn. Speed swim as water lady in ever ugly foul swamp and lake Kawe. Tree bound perhaps, but life dawn tomorrow seek find new happy plan. God fuck tree speak. Aw oh, look at her go. What a what a free spirit. Swinging away to the skies. <laughs> Dancing in the breeze as the leaves go flying by her. She's kind of adorable as brunette. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's a good morning on bald land of Sing Song Treft Island. Oh my god, please don't tell me you're going to do the whole episode on Tree Speak. Oh god, no. Fuck Tree Speak. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Fabulous Fish. And I'm Katatui 101. And welcome back to Tomodachi Life. Uh, oh, okay, I thought she was asleep. I was going to be like, I swear to God tomorrow. It's like, tomorrow, you're early, bro. What are you doing asleep? Alright, now this Aww. makes a lot of sense. She wants a friend already. Oh, wow. She's going to usurp the blue. <laughs> I like to think outside the box. Yes, that's exactly what you do. Yeah, she does. I want to be friends with oh. oh my god. <laughs> I gotta beat she, her to it. She's gotta get in on the blue before she gets her. What she do get along with her? Try speaking in full sentences. Yeah, I don't I don't know if the blue could understand your tree speak. Um try keep, to keep, listen. Yeah. I was gonna say or keep it brief. She's a chatterbox. Yeah. So is the blue. They're both chatterboxes. I actually feel like they're going along really well. Yeah, me too. If they don't keep talking over each other. <laughs> Real talk, can I just say seeing Tamaru speak in full sense of there is like kind of awkward? It's so wrong. It just like uh, makes me uncomfortable. Oh, well, she's laughing. Ooh. Hey, they were, oh, yeah, they were I, chatting I, for a long time. I know. Well, they had a lot to say. That's true. I did just say they were chatterboxes. Yeah. It worked. We are friends now, thanks to you. It worked. We friends. Can we give her her blue hair? <laughs> yes. She looks adorable brunette, but that's also something making this feel yeah. so wrong. It's like distracting me. Oh, bath set. Oh, nice. <laughs> the other <laughs> day! We, we, just now, she gave me a barbell. <laughs> when we moved in. All right, let's see. Barbell uh, for a workout. <laughs> must get big muscle. There we go. Yeah. Let's dye my hair a cute new color. What color should I use? Let's see, is it Do is that one? Probably, yeah, that one below that. Like the nice fluorescent one? Yeah. Her hair is like bright neon blue. Yeah. It's like a slight minty. There's almost like a greenish to it, though. Yeah. Nice. There, that's tomorrow. That's adorable. It's kind of overbearingly I, Yeah, I know. <laughs> she's gonna level up soon. I know. Like, she's already here. She's about to, like, I swear to God. Aww. Uh, oh, she's so close. <laughs> Is that like the fastest we're gonna level up for me? Diamond yeah. David, get on that. What's yeah. the fastest that me's been leveled up? Oh my god, she was gonna level up before we even left her room. All right, let's see. Uh, I don't want to see Joe White. Oh, jeez. Oh, um, I'd rather not. Don't get involved in that. Yeah, let's just see what Dry Skink's up to. 
She wants a friend. Yeah, she needs to increase her. Actually, she has a good amount of friends. Oh, uh, yeah. More than I was expecting, at the yeah. very least. It seems like Neb and I are <laughs> on the same page. And by on the same page, I mean it seems like Neb wants to talk to me and I don't want to see him. <laughs> what should I say? Um, honestly, not compatible. Maybe you're right. Dude, there's a reason you two broke up. Yeah. <laughs> me and Neb aren't on the same page. Like, not even the same book. No. I still haven't reached my peak on Tuesdays. <laughs> Maybe by <laughs> Thursday. I'll make a work of art. Just these random ass comments they always make. I know, I love it. Oh, oh god, I, I don't I don't want to get involved in this, like I feel like this could get bad though. It's Yeah. He might break her suit. I know, he might expose her as an earthworm. Yeah. No one can't have that go Actually wait, hold on a sec. I think Boris should be the one to apologize. Yeah, bro, I'm sure it's not Vegas Fitness's fault. I mean she's just an earthworm. Where's Boris's apartment at? It's like over on yeah. the Yeah, there it is. Oh my god, you see her just zoom in! I know! It's like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm in a bad mood. The earthworm pissed me off. Does he know she's an earthworm? Oh no, I don't think he does. That weird metal woman pissed me off. Oh god, what do you do to get Boris to calm down? I need a bath for my eyebrows. An eyebrow bath? We have enough bath sets. Yeah, I'd say so. I was around the time when Kate wanted a bath and we gave her last one to Lauren. Oh. And then like three other me's asked for baths in the same episode. I remember that. I was like, oh my, how many of you guys need baths today? <laughs> They're all very stinky. That was what cemented Lauren as the true villain of the series. Like, she's worse than hammer tapping. Yeah. She's like actually chaotic evil. Yo, no, no, she is. I'll give her the rubber ducky to patch things up. I mean, Boris is also kind of chaotic evil. Yeah, that's true. I want to do one day like an alignment chart for Treft Island. Oh my god, can we? When the whole roster is revealed. The whole roster, all 100 pl uh, permanent residents plus like the extra 20 like uh, temporary sorry, residents like Joe White and Byleth. Yeah, oh, totally. And Carlford. I'm sorry too. We could stream that. That would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah, making a, uh, an alignment chart. We also do a Husbando waifu tier list. Oh for yeah. For Island. Because like, Boris, those eyebrows, solid A tier. They're a little intimidating for that's, my taste. That's why it's so. not S. Yeah. Some people might get kind of scared away because like, he comes off so strong. Also, yeah. he's in this outfit. <laughs> he's wearing spandex. Competitive society is necessary, I think. <laughs> but no one can ever be as good as me and my nope. eyebrows. Oh, good night. <laughs> my eyebrows said it's time to go back to sleep. <laughs> that was literally the last. Wait, hold on. I, I want to draw. Don't. Don't draw on his eyebrows. Don't draw on his eyebrows? All right. Yeah. <laughs> he, if he wakes up and catches you, he will murder you. Yeah, that's probably a pretty bad idea. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh my god, I love how weird this game is. I'm crawling my way through life. Oh. <laughs> One eyebrow hair at a time. <laughs> Are you and Crunk going to try to get married again yet? Oh, I hope so. It's been like, what, since episode 25 they've been trying to get married? Well, they were having such shit luck. They I know, they kept, up. all their uh, proposals kept getting botched. I know. All right, that was smooth. That was sm Yeah. Tar, for a social butterfly, I kind of expected you to not be alone right now. I know. Well, she's singing to herself, sing song. Let's see, Dakota, you were like off your game today. You didn't want to like... She didn't want to be friends with Tamaru right off the bat. I know. I what makes the Tamaru beat her to it? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen you for three weeks. I've been counting. <laughs> I like some new clothes. Oh. Oh, that thing is so cute on you, though. But it's not winter, it's summer. No, that's true. Let's see, is there anything new here? I like the frog romper. That scarf and sweater is kind of debluity. That is, that like... is. We can see if we have any in our inventory. It's got triangles on it. And also, it's summer. Yeah. The blue's dressed like it's winter. You might want to take off the winter hat for yeah. this outfit. Her head's going to get very sweaty. My head gets cold sometimes. <laughs> This island is a lot more happening now that you're getting some travelers. I that... made friends with all of them. <laughs> I made friends with every single traveler. <laughs> all right, let's see. Oh, Camille. Oh, okay. Do you want to be friends with Tamaru also? Everyone wants to be friends with Tamaru. She's so outgoing and charming. Yeah. I can't believe you're here. Yeah, how are you doing with you and Kate? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. Oh, sure. Oh, that's sweet. Are you guys getting ready to have your second child? Because we're kind of waiting for you guys to have your second child. Yeah, any day now. Let's see. Early morning. I'm thinking either the park or the beach. Go to the beach. I bet an early beach day would be fun. Yeah, yeah, because it's like no 8 a.m. Yeah, like no one's there yet. No, and also we had to do 8 a.m. because, you know, tomorrow gets up at the butt crack of dawn every morning. Oh, yeah. She's an early bird. I don't have any specific song in mind, but I figured might as well start unlocking them. Yeah. Well, she could sing a woeful song about her childhood. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. I was like, did we, like, unlock something? I was like, wait, what did we... <laughs> Get him kicking his leggers. Those two are not dressed for the beach. No. Hold on, I saw another uh, 
Oh my oh god, no. Joe White. I want to be friends with Tamaru. Grab her booty. Please don't, Joe White. She's underage. <laughs> <laughs> You're not boring. That's not how I describe you. Oh my god. <laughs> Pick oh me my and Holly god. Boyo. <laughs> Get away from her. Not compatible. <laughs> not compatible. Joe White, do not touch her. <laughs> oh my god. I want the holly booty. Yeah, I'm sure you are. You're right behind them. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> 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 Wait, he wasn't at the house, was he? Um. Oh no, there he is. I guess he is now. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> guess Dakota's just busy making him breakfast. Yeah. Wow, damn, was that it for early morning problems? That, yeah, all right. I'll take it. I'll take it. I think tomorrow's room being at the first floor fits her. Oh, yeah, she because she's afraid of heights. Snail dream again. What is with the snail dreams today? For someone who lives in the treetops, tomorrow has a fear of heights. I know, I love that. She's so That's great. Why, she's so why, great. Yeah, she spends all of her days down in the swamp. In the <laughs> this swamp. is my swamp. <laughs> swamp is my honest Yoda. <laughs> swamp is mine. <laughs> <laughs> How would Tamaru say it then? I don't, I don't, because she likes the swamp. No, how? Oh, uh, like, is my swamp. <laughs> what? There's nothing. It's like, oh. Yeah, oh. that's right. <laughs> it just keeps going. Where's my prize? <laughs> I thought say, where's my pride? <laughs> it's like, well, it's your town. I've been having that dream a lot lately. There's always nothing at the end of the rope. <laughs> Oh, I feel like the whale might be a little sad. Have you got a little summer blues? Aw, poor whale. He misses his town. I know, poor whale indeed. All right, not too bad. Let's yeah. make a round to the island. Ooh, new hats. <laughs> the boots first in line. God, she is not dressed for this weather. Ooh, Ooh, lemonade. Corn on the cup. We got some nice summer foods here. Yeah. Oh, lobster. Don't mind if I do. Yum. I actually don't like lobster. Oh, I like lobster. I have a policy against eating bugs. And shellfish are just giant bugs, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, don't ruin it for me. Now nah, we're good here. Welcome. And interiors. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. We I can like... afford those. We can afford those. Okay. We got plenty of cash, see? Yeah. Don't spike yourself on the cactus. <laughs> Warnings from Blockhead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. First, you have some morning market. Oh, my God. Mart's selling habaneros. Yeah, Mart's just out here. He grew them himself. Sure, Thank why you. not? Thank you. Why don't we do some flying discs, shall we? Oh, uh, yeah. With <laughs> Garrett and Rachel. I'm cool with that. I feel like Garrett <laughs> might be trying to go with Rachel. Yeah. She's single at the moment. Oh. She's pretty hot, man. I mean, she is. She's Leo Michelle. Coming yeah. <laughs> Coming at you, y'all rot you. Hop. That little zinger. It's time and she's like, right back at you. I don't want you. <laughs> Wait, I want to see his trick. Super Garrett Extreme. <laughs> Got it. All right. And whoa. oh, that was oh, terrible. No. Oh, no. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> yeah, just, she's going to be pissed. <laughs> oh, she looks so cute in that. I know. Sarah's the best for the newscaster. Her and Camille. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, he would. <laughs> David Boy Genius. He's got a little full of himself. Look at him wearing it. <laughs> He's like, my head's here and it's also here. He has a photo of himself on the wall. Labeled me. <laughs> I was so worried about David's t-shirt business not going anywhere. But I'm so happy for him. Sarah's like, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> oh, is that everyone? Was there? Yeah. Oh, oh no. no, there's one person. I'm okay with there being just one, just like... Wait, Fred and Sapphire? I didn't know they became friends. I didn't know they were friends. I'll have to check on that I, later. I, I didn't know Fred left his room, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah. Did you bring me any water? <laughs> I hope you were out getting it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay, well, that's perfect. You're always mad. She's almost done her phrases. Oh, wow. I can't, I can't get my voice in her range. Ow. Sometimes I can. Otherwise he'll burn yourself out. I want to see who Fred's friends with, because I didn't know he had friends. I know, right? I thought he just sat alone in his room contemplating life all day. I know, really? 
Yeah, it's been forever since he had a problem, Fred. I, have he had a problem since he was introduced? He's friends with Kate. Jeez, he has a lot of friends. I was thinking it might be cool if he wants to move to the island. Oh, Fred's lonely. Oh, poor Fred. <laughs> but didn't he like Sam at one point? He had like a crush on her. Isn't he listed as a child? Oh, wait, yeah, I think he is. So no, probably not. I mean, I have like the hots for her kind of in the way like you'd have a crush on a babysitter or something. Yeah, yeah. Nothing too serious. He's 10. That's true. I know he's like six feet tall, but he's 10. <laughs> and his voice is so deep. <laughs> he's an early bloomer. What can I say? All right, damn, that was, that was smooth. That was quick. I literally put down for a minute to go to the bathroom and I see problems popped up. Oh my god, guys, what's going on? Oh my god. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot there dating. are a couple. Yeah. Weirdest ship. Weirdest I ship. I don't know how I feel about that. Fred has a problem. <laughs> Good morning. He left his room today, that's why. Yeah, he's, he's like, wow, the world's really problematic out He's there. like, hey, nips look alike. How many rooms are in this building? I'm a little intimidated. <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I've, I've seen better, but I've seen worse. Maybe that's what he's been doing in his room since like episode seven or eight where he was introduced. I was expecting it to be better than that then. I know. He's, well, Fred doesn't have any frame of reference then. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's see. Oh, tomorrow with another friend. Oh my God. She really tomorrow. is trying to usurp to blue. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, tomorrow. Good morning. The morning is good. <laughs> All right, do it. Why not? <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. It's like Josh is allowed to have friends. Be flat. No, it's just funny because it's like this is the second friend she's wanted since she arrived on the island. Yeah. It's like she actually is trying to like take the loot slot. Yeah. Oh my god. Speaking of that, so I know like Diamond Dave attracts like character specific stats. Yeah, I know. I'm curious, David, how do you plan to track stats for new characters? Like, if they have specific ones. Are you going to, like, determine what specific stats they should get after they've been there a few episodes and then go back the last few episodes and recount? Oh, uh, yeah. Huh. Because, like, for instance, what if Sapphire's whole thing is she always gets into huge fights with people because the fire? Oh, yeah, yeah, Like, right. would you would you then, like, retroactively go back and recount that? Yeah. I'm just curious. I know we actually promised him he'll get to join us in the final episode if he stat tracks until the end. Oh, my God. Yeah, so he can just, like, tell us all the stats. She leveled up. Jesus Christ, Jamaru. Let's give her a catchphrase, shall we? Yeah. Of course. I feel like we had to do this. She's gonna fly away. She's flying away <laughs> like a bird. <laughs> but see, like, she's proud of who she is. You know, she sucks at it. Yeah. Oh, here it goes. She's like, just in case. Uh, in case my hair dye uh, goes away. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make more friends with the travelers. And I think there were some over at the houses. So let me just yeah. jump over there. Oh, Dakota, you want to be friends now? Another... James! Oh, oh really? Oh, God, oh, James and Fred in the same episode. I know, the two that never it's do anything. Long, it's, it's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign of what? Like something bad's gonna happen. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> she looks all exotic and different. Her hair is blue. She doesn't really wear a shirt. From the moment she fell out of that tree and smiled at me. The moment she fell out of that tree and smiled at me. <laughs> now you have to make that the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is canon that the reason he wasn't there at the beginning of the episode, uh, something funny. Yeah. The reason he wasn't there at the beginning of the episode, when the Blute was there making breakfast, it's because he was walking the park and Tamaru <laughs> fell out of a tree in front of him. Yeah, and he's like, couldn't get that out of his mind. It's like, that was the most adorable thing. They're close enough in age, that's not weird. Yeah, yeah, no, they are. They're what, like three years apart? Yeah, about, give or take. He's like, I have to go see her. Oh, good, they hit nice, it off. Nice. <laughs> I don't know why it's so... It's, it wouldn't be funny that he wanted to be friends with her if it wasn't the fact that Fred also wanted something this episode. I, I know, I know. The two, like, literal, like, they never want anything. <laughs> They're so self-sufficient. I know. Well, because he's married. He's like, I said I peaked in life. That's all I ever wanted. <laughs> now I just need a couple of kids. Is he a reader? Not really. Liar. He's a liar. Sam is with David. Do oh, it. <laughs> Push-ups. Pumping their guns. <laughs> Oh my god. <sighs> Alright, fine. If it'll keep you away from Holly for a little bit. <laughs> Just for a little longer, <laughs> Joe White, please. Are we there? Let's play the me shadow quiz while I grab your booty. I can tell them the me is from the shadow of their booty. <laughs> that is a Rachel booty. <laughs> In a zebra dress. <laughs> That is Camille's booty. She's got a very fine booty. I swear to God, these are all women. I know. 
which he is doing. Oh, that is Percy. He's also got a nice booty. That he does. Joe White does not discriminate. <laughs> oh my god, Joe White crabs. Joe White it still blows my mind that we got the actual Joe White on this show. I know. Next is Scott the Waz. Next to Community Train gets Scott the Waz on. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, a jump rope. I can use it to jump! <laughs> and people's booties look nice when they jump. That is true. I was gonna say, I could lasso it around a tree and climb up to get a good view on all the booties. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh geez. Sam. She's back from her rigorous workout. She's like, what do you think of me and David? Good buddies? <laughs> Who do you think's Buffer? I'm here, David. And they're best friends. I feel like she might have feelings for him one day. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Tomaru. Not she that, not that Tamaru, not that I want to friends tomorrow. I heard that Tamaru wants to be friends. She actually fucking is becoming to blue. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, Tamaru. Oh my gosh. I love that though. That's so fitting. I swear to god. <laughs> she beat the blue to it. And she's yeah. like, I'm going to have more friends than her by next week. Just you see. She might at this rate. That's We'll get into talking about her character a little more later. Because I'm sure yeah. her bio just confused people who didn't already know anything about her. Oh my Tamaru. god, I know, right? <laughs> but honestly, her wanting to be friends with everyone is really fitting. Yeah, she's she's a social butterfly, even if she's not the most aware in the world. Yes. All right, let's give Sam her final present. Yeah. I think Sam would have a lot of fun with these. Yeah, she can shake them all around. Don't shake that booty, though. Now with Joe White in the building. No, you never know when he's going to be poking his eye stalks through your window. <laughs> That's to be a thumbnail for one of the just oh. Joe White's eyes, like, peering through the window. Just coming under the door like Ronald McDonald's head in my nightmare. Uh, <laughs> do you want to provide context for that? Oh, yeah. Well, when I was a kid, I had this recurring nightmare of, like, I would be lying in my bed and Ronald McDonald would stick his head under the door. <laughs> And, like, come up to my bed and be like, hey. So when are we adding Ronald McDonald to Tomodachi life? Oh, no. <laughs> Please don't. I have nightmares uh, about is him. Is that mac and cheese or candy corn in a bowl? That's mac and cheese. All right, because I was going to say, I feel like candy corn could be in a bowl. Yeah, no, I could see that. I think this game puts him on a plate, though. <laughs> You're just going to plate out for your macaroni and cheese? And finally, the last mystery channel. What do you think it is? There's a s'more. I wish I had a s'more right now. Oh, I know, I love s'mores. Every time we walk into Walmart and I smell those marshmallows in the front, oh I'm like, my god, oh, yeah. I like s'mores. I feel that. Alright, let's go small. Like the horn on his head. <laughs> oh my god, I hate that thing. Let's try to get another jump rope. The sun looks prettier than ever. Not that I tell her that. Why, why wouldn't you <laughs> tell her that? David, why? <laughs> Not that I tell my girlfriend how I feel about her. Why would I tell my girlfriend I think she's pretty? What could the son's part-time job be? Is that... is that Kate? <laughs> she's shopping for clothes, aw. Alright. I guess since we have a minute... Tomorrow, all these friends, you're sitting here alone! I guess yeah. that's in character, too. Yeah, they got annoyed by her. Why don't we talk a little about... Not just Tomorrow, but let's just talk about Bionicle as a franchise, because... Uh, God, it's, that's that's the million dollar question. How the fuck do you describe Bionicle? Where do you even start? I think I think the little intro I gave at the beginning of the Monog LP was great for it. Just replay it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but in all seriousness, um, I do think this needs to be said because if you grew up in our generation, you knew what Bionicle was even if you weren't into it. Oh yeah, I recognize the logo. But I feel like for something so big, it has faded into so much obscurity. Right. About half of our audience is Gen Z. They're younger than us. Katie is on the cusp of being millennial or Gen Z. Yeah. I'd say like about half of our audience is Gen Z. And not only does Gen Z not know Bionicle generally, when they do, they're usually like, yeah, I never really liked it. Yeah. Consistently. Yeah, because it sucked in the second Yo, half, yeah, but that's... I, I know why. We'll get into that. But... I will start this off by saying Bionicle was a billable action figure created by Lego that released in 2001. It released at the perfect time for something like that to exist. It really did. I will stand by that Bionicle in its original form could not be created for the first time today. It would not be possible. The environment that the world lives in is just too different now. Like, I work in a preschool, for those of you who don't know. Kids don't play with toys like they used to. Most of the kids at the preschool, they love iPads. They love mm. tablets and smart devices. And I'm not going to say this is inherently good or bad or whatever. I'm not here to make that call. What I am saying is just that it's a different world. Mm -hmm. These are people who are, like, growing up in this, like, they like things quick. They like the flashy, the constant positive feedback loop. Yeah. That is very much what, like, the Gen Z generation grew up with. They are people who, and obviously the preschoolers are younger than Gen Z. I think they're alpha. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
But Gen Z is like the first generation to really grow up with that. Millennials are the generation to grow up before smart devices were a thing. Yeah. And then Gen Z is like the first generation to grow up with smart devices already around them. Right. And I'm going to make the claim that Bionicle, at least in the form it existed in, wouldn't work in that world. Uh, so how do we begin with this? Bionicle is an action figure line. In general, yeah, kids these days don't have as much interest in action figures as they used to. No, they don't. And I guess that's a little sad. But the other thing with Bionicle, it wasn't just an action figure line. It was this big multimedia franchise. So specifically, in the late 90s, LEGO started to really do poorly financially, and they blamed the biggest source of their downfall on the rise of the Pokemon franchise. For those who don't know, Pokemon is the single biggest media franchise in the world. It actually beats out the NFL. Wow. For oh how my God. goddamn big Pokemon is. Jeez. Um, so LEGO blamed Pokemon for a lot of their uh, falling. The first thing they did, actually, to try to, like, combat this was they licensed Star Wars in order to make the Lego Star Wars sets. They found that by giving kids, like, context to who these characters are, because Star Wars obviously well-known movie franchises, kids wanted to get sets based on their favorite scenes or featuring their favorite characters, so they wanted to role-play with the toys. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the one big thing. The other big thing was Pokemon has that gotta catch them all mechanic, you know? Gotta get all the Pokemon, gotta get all the cars, gotta find them all in the game. Right. So Lego wanted to create a franchise that not only had, like, the storyline to carry it, because obviously they'd pay royalties for Star Wars. They weren't making as much of a profit on as they could have been. But they also wanted to tap into that demographic of you got to collect it all. You got to find them all. You know, catch all the monsters, catch all the Pokemons. Right, right, yeah. So that's where they created Bionicle. Bionicle's a franchise of buildable action figures, and it was well known, especially early on, that every character came with a massive Grand Theft unique power. Like, for instance, one character with the mask of speed could run really fast. One character with the mask of invisibility could turn invisible, you know? Yeah, cool stuff. But not only did each character come with a mask, every mask came in every color for every character. And you had to get them separately, like little loot boxes, essentially. Mm -hmm. That's such a good idea. Yeah, so that was supposed to be like your, your like, collect them all kind of gimmick. But that alone is what made Bionicle successful. There's a few things that did. One of the things that helped it was the figures themselves, the action figures, were really cool initially. I, I have mixed opinions on the later ones. But I also put a few, like, videos on screen here, some of the ones I'm describing. Uh, credit to LJ from the TTV channel for this. Most of my Bionicle sets are packed away in storage right now, so I can't access them. Right. But you had the main figures um, who they all had, like, you could swing their weapon by twisting gear on their back. And that's a really cool feature. I love that. And the thing I love so much about that is that you build them and you can actually see how yes. it works. You see the mechanics, like the mechanism behind why does the arm swing when I swing this gear. Yeah. Now, specifically, they also had these, like, arm swinging, swing the axe, swing the sword or whatever, to try to knock the masks off each other. And I love that they integrated the mask not just in the story with powers, but also into the way you played with the toys, too. Yeah. So now when you're playing with friends, you have incentive to have more masks. You have incentive to try to get more to use your abilities while role-playing with the toys with each other. Right. But they also have these really cool monster sets. Like, for instance, there's a scorpion set where you pull in on his head with a little trigger under his head, and his tail shoots down in front of him yeah, I to love smash that. the mask off another one. You have a tiger, this massive tiger. It's like a few hundred parts in it. You squeeze its back, and the head shoots forwards four inches and bites and pulls back. And that's like my favorite one. To like I rip, love that. rip the mask on someone. You have the Barak, which is like this round thing. First, you can roll up to a ball, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Roll around the floor for seconds. Like, you can make the head shoot forward and like bash someone. Yeah, and you can put him in his uh, case. Yeah, in like... the cancer. You can put them in the cancer hanging upside down. It's cool and alien yeah. and creepy. It's so cool. There are crabs that are remote controlled, but the only thing the motor does, it just spins two pins. So you get to see how spinning the pins with the motor actually like causes the crab to not only move forwards and backwards but also to punch with its arms it's so fucking sick it's like these are those are awesome no tomorrow don't go hey tomorrow where are you going she's off to find more friends we're talking about you tomorrow <laughs> just went out oh no where'd she go Look uh, oh, oh she's, she's at working. work oh she my looks really God. cute in that i guess we'll stay here with her for a bit <laughs> too much clothes though <laughs> yeah, too many clothes for her we'll get into that shortly <laughs> so you have early figures that are really cool I think the other thing that got it going, though, was it wasn't just these action figures in isolation. They did have a story with them. And when I say they have a story with them, I mean, you probably have no idea how much story they had with them. Oh, God, no. There are these memes saying, like, you know, like, Zelda lore, kind of complex, you know, Elder Scrolls lore, sort of complex, Lord of the Rings lore, pretty complex, Star Wars Expand Universe uh, lore, crazy complex, Bionicle lore, you need a galaxy brain. <laughs> it is so goddamn big and convoluted. I know, but I know. But also part of what made it stand out was, like, this is an action figure line and a kids that took itself pretty seriously. Yeah. It was, like... This wasn't like Star Wars where it's also kind of like goofy or whatever. It was like, they took it like really ser seriously. You know, yeah. there wasn't like, oh, I know it's your foul stench as soon as you got on board or anything like that. Uh -huh. And that was always something that really stood out to me about it when I was a kid. So when it first launched back in 2001, 
they wanted to make their presence known everywhere. They went all out. There were trading card games, um, a board game where you fucking built the board as you played it. So, because buildable action figures, of course they had to do it. So you, you build the board differently every time. There is merch like buildable toothbrushes, buildable watches and alarm clocks, buildable pens. God. Katie has a full set of the pens. I have two full sets of the pens. You have two full sets of pens. You can build them differently from each other. Yeah. They had comics with full color art. They had uh, books came a little later, like full length novels, short novels for kids, but like still like the hundred something pages. Right. Online animations, uh, video games, um, full length movies came a little later. Jesus, like was there anything they didn't cover? No, they literally got to every. There was, I'm pretty sure there's fucking skateboard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I want that. I want skateboard. You want because they're learning to skateboard? Yeah. One of my favorite things is the backpack that's just like their head. <laughs> I think my favorite thing is the kitchen sponge. Oh, the kitchen if you, sponge. If anyone watching this video has that, uh, please please message me. I will pay you way more than it's worth to get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just, it was everywhere. And then to give you an idea of how big it was, because again, I feel like most of our audience doesn't realize how big Bionicle was at its peak. In 2002, the single most popular comic book in the world was Bionicle. It Crazy. beat out traditional comics like Spider-Man and Superman and all those. Oh my God. And remember that not every kid playing with the toys got the comics. That is how big it was at its peak. That's crazy. I'll give you another example. In the top 10 best-selling DVDs for 2003 was Bionicle Mask of Light, which came out in September of 2003, near the end of the year. Oh my and it, it still just, made top 10. It just wiped the floor with everything. And then we'll get into now, what, where did it go? For something so big, how did it just fade into obscurity? And I think a big part of that is it didn't end with a bang. It kind of slowly fizzled out like a long, painful death. Mm. So as, as Bionicle went on, um, the story kept getting more complex. That makes sense. You have every year would be like a different arc, but they'd all build upon each other and be connected. Right. You start having a problem then where about 2005-ish, all the new fans coming in, they were having a lot more trouble getting invested because they had to catch up. It'd be like trying to jump into like Game of Thrones in the last season. Right. Yeah. And like, you're a kid, so you can't just like go to Netflix and rewatch it. You have to like get all these old books and comics from eBay sometimes. Yeah. And it, it, it probably wasn't easy to just like look up what's happened so far because like, I don't know how to like developed the internet was yeah this yet. is 2005 this is before like the internet was like i mean it existed then obviously i used it then yeah but it wasn't like it is now though the internet yeah. was a different beast you back couldn't then. just spark notes bionicle no there probably wasn't a wiki for it yeah i think the no. wiki was 2007 maybe in 2006 I, I don't i double check that yeah but like so you have that new fans having trouble coming in and now here's the problem the fans then are the older fans from the beginning but if they were let's say eight when it started in 2001 by the end of 2005 they could be as old as 13. Mm -hmm. So Lego started to try to, in order to keep their interest, make the story more mature. The story got a little more violent. They straight up had a set with dried blood on its swords. I love it. Um, the story started to get like more violent, more dark. The set started to get more complex. You started having like these big giant battle vehicles that with like 800 parts in them and stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are awesome. But I think Lego was finding that like teenagers aren't as likely, at least then, to buy action figures as kids back in the 2000s. It's probably different now, different demographics. Yeah. But here's my, I don't have proof of this. I think that's my theory, though, as to why it started to tank in sales in the second half. No, it makes sense to me. And the other thing was the sets got really samey. So, you know how I was just talking about they had all these different cool functions and stuff. They could, like, swing their arms, shoot their heads out. 2006 started to get rid of those functions with the sets that was those years. They had light-up eyes and light-up swords, and they had, like, guns that could shoot stuff. And the guns were cool. Yeah. And then every single set after that had a gun that could shoot something. And that was it. No more swinging arms, no more interesting builds. Uh, the sets used to like, combine together to create bigger sets. They stopped doing that as often. Uh, yeah. We used I... to be able to like, take the six spider sets and combine them into a giant scorpion monster. That was so cool. You know, it used to be able to like, like, take take all these different sets and make them into a giant like bear thing. Yeah, I, I miss like, the functions of them, like the gears and stuff. Like... <laughs> so like the sets declined in quality, the, the fandom started to diminish. And they had the problem where near the end, I think that even the fans following the story kind of lost interest. I know I did around like fifth grade, which is about like 2007, 2008 for me. The story of Bionicle started to get way too convoluted for its own good. Like Heard. you had like 10 different subplots going on at once and you had to keep up with all of them to understand what was happening and remember everything from the beginning of the story. Mm. It was just, it was biting off more than it could chew. Right. Um, right before the it, the franchise died, they tried to do like a soft reboot. Where in this soft reboot, they like is on another planet now. And yes, it's still connected to the old lore, but it's basically all new characters. You don't really need to know the old lore. And I think Lego's hope was this would attract new fans. It did the opposite. All it did was alienate the pre-existing fans. Now they had no interest in it either. Yeah. Bionicle died such a slow, painful death. I know. And like also the sets then I feel like weren't as interesting. They so weren't. it wasn't like bringing in new people. It wasn't. No. 
And so it fades into obscurity. And now you have like your modern generation, like Gen Z, they probably look at Bionicle as like, it was basically like Ninjago's predecessor. And I'm like, saying Bionicle is like Ninjago is like saying Angry Birds is like Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah. They're completely different beasts with completely different niches that target completely different things. Mm -hmm. Ninjago is very different. I feel like it's more aimed towards like Gen Z interests and stuff. I could see that. I also say as someone who, mind you, I have very little experience with that, could be dead wrong. My understanding is that Ninjago's are very episodic, a lot of smaller, simpler, self-contained stories. Ninjago's more or less set in, I know it's like his own fictional world, but it's not like Bionicle where the world itself is hard to understand. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I could tell you all this shit about the political structure of Metro Nui, as well as <laughs> that all the characters lived inside of a giant fucking robot. And, yeah, yeah. And it's important because it's an allegory for how human blood cells work. <laughs> It's like all this convoluted shit. I know, we've spent like walks, entire walks of you just explaining by on. Well, because you'd be asking, how did this work? Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, this is going to take at least an hour to explain how this worked. <laughs> but sometimes I'm thinking about it too much and you're like, Katie, it's it's a series for 10-year-old yes. boys. There's like- the other thing too. I will speak very highly of Bionicle. I'm very nostalgic for it. I grew up with it. Um, I got and my right into the franchise right on Mask of Life. Great time to get it near the beginning, but also it was developed enough that there was a lot for me to go back on still. Yeah. I've revisited it as an adult. I'm going to tell you firsthand. I'm sure everyone knew this and saw this coming. It doesn't hold up as well as I'd like it to. It holds up a lot better than I thought it would, though. I will give it that. Mm-hmm. I think the story is a lot of great ideas. I think a lot of the characters are great ideas. I think the scene by scene writing, yeah, not the greatest. I think you make it sound a lot more entertaining to me. Yeah. Than it well, the other is. thing too is like I'm telling you the story as an adult. Yeah. You still have to remember these were stories initially meant for the 8 to 10 demographic only meant for the 10 to 13 demographic only meant for like I guess the 13 to 15 demographic yeah these aren't stories meant for adults they don't hold up as adult stories I feel like there's a ton of potential there and also the author of the book said the same thing that he'd like to see someone reboot Bionicle aimed at adults oh I'll do it Hit you'll me do up. it you're making all waifus yeah yeah they're they're gonna be humans though just so you, know. <laughs> <laughs> so you can waifuize them yeah I just wanted to put out there like how this franchise kind of came and died I lost interest in it Back in 2008. Um, when, when I found out it got canceled in 2010, I actually went back and just like caught up on like, like, there's only a few books and comics I missed. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it wasn't really that great. Or not missing much. No, but like I did. And then my figures sat on my shelves collecting dust basically from 2007 until 2019. I know. Because here's what happened in 2019. I got a job. I made 50000 a year at this job. And I still lived with my parents. So I had 50000 a year in my pocket. <laughs> and that 50,000 a year could buy like 10 Bionicle sets in a year because fuck it, they got crazy expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, exaggerating, obviously, I got more than 10. I actually have almost a complete set. Started getting all these masks. I'm like, hmm, this mask is only $1,000. I can afford that. <laughs> I feel like I, it was my fault too because like what started it all kind of was that I lost you a bid one time. Yeah, you I lost thought... me. I was just going to buy one set and like I was one of the exo toys as a kid. So I was bidding yeah. on Eve and Katie lost me the bid. She fucked something up. <laughs> no, I felt so bad. So I was like, oh, you should buy this thing. This thing's cool And then too. you're talking to buying like three more and then it just spiraled <laughs> i kept buying more yeah um so these days my uncle is basically like a collecting thing that like adults do mm-hmm. the, the niche that still cares about it yeah the sets are really expensive because it's hard to find a lot of them complain there's a lot of really rare parts to them too i can do entire visual videos on the sets i can do entire visual videos on the story itself yeah but like uh, i just like it's so much how do i get into it here i know i'm trying to give you like a general background of what it is and why it why it matters to me and actually, Katie has a bit of a personal connection to it, and that is, um, I think this specific video is going to go up on August 10th, which is Bionicle Day. Yeah. Uh, that was planned. That was planned. Yeah. If everything goes as planned, this will go up August 10th. And that's funny, because then exactly two years the day before this video goes up, August 10th of 2019, was the day I had Katie play Monog. Yes, and that was the day I just became an instant Bionicle fan. So here's what I will say. I literally just said that Bionicle is not hold off as a whole. Right. There is one piece of media that does, and that is Monog. Monog stands for a man who online game. It is a flash game, web browser flash game released in 2001. It is actually officially the starting point of the franchise. That is the first bit of story lore to the entire franchise. So you can follow it without knowing anything about the franchise prior. You can just play that game in isolation and understand it. Yeah. And Katie, do you think I'm exaggerating the least bit when I say that is the greatest licensed video game ever made? Oh, not at all. That game is amazing. So are you done working now? I want to like bring her back. And yeah, there we go. Oh, nice. She's working out with Sam now. Great. That game was just like it stood out so much to me. The characters were so much fun. The art style, the was writing is great. It was the, so witty. The so I'm gonna say like the soundtrack of Bionicle's always been good. I'll just play a few exe- excerpts here. Here's soundtrack from one of the movies.
Here's the soundtrack from one of the games. But then here's the Minog soundtrack. Do you hear how atmospheric that is? So atmospheric. So, Minog, like I said, greatest licensed game ever. Uh, Battle for Kingdom Bomb, great licensed game, you know? A solid A tier. Yeah. Uh, Pickles Big Game, great licensed game, solid A tier. Minog is the only licensed game I've ever played that does not feel like a licensed game. Yeah. It feels like this is a game franchise, it even does. though it's not. But I will make the argument since technically my uncle debuted with it, Tahu can be in Smash Bros. Fight Me. Yes. He'd also be a better addition than like literally all the DLC cards except for like Banjo and Steve. I, I know. I and Pyra, know. but I have a soft soft for Pyra. Yeah. But like, God fucking Kazuya, I'd rather Tahu. I know. <laughs> He's right. so much more interesting. Yes. Need to represent licensed games. With, he could switch masks with his down B. That'd be awesome. That'd be so great. And and have his Mask of Light actor play him because he was legendary. Yes. Uh, but anyways, too, too niche now. No one knows about it now. Yeah. I had Katie play Minog. Uh, it's very short. The game's about two hours long. Katie played through it in one sitting. And what would you say? Like, how invested were you? I was so invested. I was like, I gotta, I gotta like read this whole thing now. Like, I want to read the books and the comics. And then you tried a few, and like, oh yeah, they kind of suck. Yeah. So <laughs> I just had you, you tried a few of the comics. You're like, yeah, they're not as good as Monog. They're a little cheesier. No, no. The thing I loved so much about Monog was the writing felt so adult. It does. It does. Monog's writing is so much better yeah. than everything else in the series. But also, kids could get it too, which is yeah. It, it's it feels adult, but much like the show Avatar, it's adult but it's still kid friendly. Yeah. And I feel like that is the niche that the rest of Bionicle is trying to go for. The writing just wasn't quite intelligent enough to do that. It's not, it doesn't hold a candle to Avatar. Avatar is a better show. Oh, yeah. The, this character development storyline, Avatar, definitely, but I'm not going to argue it's not. Yeah. But, um, God, so that was like, that was like right after I started buying sets again. And like that just like got me re hooked. Suddenly I'm invested again, reading up on all the lore again. <laughs> um, I said, like, Katie, I want to redo my Monog LP I did in like 2012. I was like, yeah, I'll do it with you. I love Monog. And then I'm like, you know what I really want to do to make this Let's Play special? Because I feel like a licensed Flash game based on a franchise most of my audience has never heard of is probably not going to be that popular. So I'm like, here's what we'll do to lower people in. I want you, Katie, to do art, an individual thumbnail for every episode, like Tomodachi Life. And do you remember what your response was? Your response was, how the fuck am I supposed to draw these things? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you asked me if you could, like, jajinka them, humanize them. Uh -huh. And I'm like, go for it. Go for it. And you want to talk a little bit yeah. of the process of that? Because this is now getting into, like I said, this is a lot we have to say. This is getting into how tomorrow exists. It was really fun to, like, take their personalities and design a character based on their personality. Like, like tomorrow especially, I just tried to capture this, like, laid-back, carefree vibe with her. Like, 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 also, like, really energetic and klutzy yeah. and clumsy. It's like, her hair is kind of like a rat's nest. And, like, her, her outfit is, like, it's, like... I don't know. She just looks like a jungle lady who's really free and yeah. It's it's also the fun hair colors. Yes, that was fun. My anime colored hair. It just gave you a lot to work with. The other thing I like is that you tried to take elements of their toy designs and incorporate it to the tribal tattoos they had. Right. Yeah. Like you would try to take like okay, so you have like kind of this shape here on Maku's mask. Mm -hmm. So this is what you're gonna put as Maku's tattoos now. Yeah, exactly. And like, I thought that was really clever. I like that you did that. And you also tried to take their color schemes into account. Like right. some of them, like Maku has brown hair, even though the toy was mostly blue. Mm -hmm. But like, like her torso in, in the toy was blue, so I made her bathing suit blue. Yeah, and like for tomorrow, you like took her colors. I actually kind of flipped them. You flipped her mask and her torso, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. But like, you still took like the same color scheme for her more or less. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. So that LP went up, and if you'd believe it, that LP has been one of the most successful things on the channel. It's straight up, I think, the first episode has the most views relative to the day it went up. Wow. Like, it beat out 900 Frights. It's going to surpass 900 Frights in a couple of years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's why I always say Scooby-Doo doesn't get me views. Fucking Bionicle? That gets me views. I gotta do Bionicle fishbowls. I know. Bionicle is niche, so it's great for that. Yeah, because, like, no one's creating videos on it because it fans so much obscurity. I know. 
So, I guess we've done all this without actually telling people what the actual premise of Bionicle is. Oh my god, yeah, there, there's, <laughs> there's so more. much to it. <laughs> I just want to put this premise out there for anyone who still is like, they don't understand the franchise. So let me just put this here. It'll first off tell you what it started as, and second, I think you'll immediately see what the draw to it is, even if it doesn't appeal to you personally. Mm -hmm. So Bionicle, Minog. Minog is called Manu Online Game. Manui being the tropical island they live on. They worship a god also named Manu who's been cast asleep by his evil brother, the Makuta. Right. And what's really cool about this is this is a tropical island filled with a bunch of cyborg people. They're not robots, they are cyborgs. They are somewhat, like, organic and living. Mm, they have blood. Filled with a bunch of cyborg people living in hunter-gatherer tribes without technology. <laughs> what? Like, what the fuck? That is probably the most original starting point premise I've ever seen. It's like, you guys are made of technology. How do you have no technology? Yeah. <laughs> so, hence why they have tribal tattoos and, like, Tamara's wearing skins in the outfit Katie drew for her. Right, yeah. Maku has feathers in her hair. Yeah, and, like, a hunter spear and stuff. Yeah. That is such, like, a what the fuck. Like, at least as a kid, I'm like, I kind of feel like I have to figure out what's going on here. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, it's actually very similar to Xenoblade in the sense that it's all about, like, exploring the world and more unfolds. Like, one of the twists part way in is they discover... ...underground beneath their island is a giant ocean. And in the middle of this ocean is a city on a small landmass in ruins. And it's been abandoned for a thousand years with all this futuristic technology. And then the fucking old guys in the village are like, Oh yeah, we've been to the city. We used to live there. This is where we came from. And we also used to be superheroes. Yeah, we also used to be superheroes ourselves. Here's this story about the downfall of the city. It's also an awesome story. Oh yeah. One of those stories that holds it better, I think. You kept having these twists that would explore the way the world worked. And they foreshadowed a shit. They foreshadowed to some shit in Monog, the release in 2001, that wasn't revealed to the public until like 2008. That's crazy. Like, they had it all planned out. They had most of the story planned from the start. Not all, and they definitely changed plans that they want. <laughs> in character. Perfectly in character. So in Monog, you wake up in a first-person perspective as a regular villager. You're on the island of Manu, you wake up on a beach, and you find that, according to their legends, these mythical heroes that control the elements, kind of like characters in Avatar, named the Toa, would one day come and liberate the island from darkness. Mm -hmm. This game starts with the Toa coming. What I like is you don't play as a Toa. You play as one of the villagers. And you hardly see the Toa in this game. Yeah, it makes you're, them feel so mystical. You're mostly interacting with the other villagers, the normal people. Yeah. Everyone's going to get a quick glimpse of the Toa, and it makes them feel so, yeah, mystical, mysterious, intriguing. You always want to see a little more of them. I like how they actually use cutscenes of the Toa as, like, rewards for beating a level in the game. Yeah, right. So Monog is a point-and-click adventure visual novel kind of game. And it's definitely slow. I can definitely see it being too slow for some people. But I think for what it's trying to be, it's absolutely perfect. Oh, yeah, It's definitely. exactly what it needs to be for what it wants to be. Yeah. And that's the main sense to me. It's like, who makes this action figure line... And makes the main game, the first game to talk about with kids, a slow-paced point-and-click game. It's so intriguing, though. You think they do a platformer, an action game, an RPG? No. no. They did a visual novel. And I love that they're willing to take that risk, and it totally paid off. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, for those of you who haven't seen it, we do have a Let's Play of Monog. It is only about two hours long. It is also one of our best Let's Plays. Mm-hmm. I'd agree. It is also one of our best Let's Plays. Definitely check it out if you haven't. It, like I said, only two hours long. Yeah, it helps me out a lot with my art, too, which is just a personal thing It did, for me, yeah. But... Your, your art style started shifting then, getting a lot more etchy. Yeah, definitely. Which, actually, speaking about that, let's talk about some of the character designs here. <laughs> so, we picked Tamaru to represent the Monog Let's Play. Like I said before, a lot of characters we pick are supposed to represent individual Let's Plays. Right. And Tamaru specifically is supposed to represent Monog. We could have picked a lot of characters in Monog, because there are a lot of characters in Monog. A lot of great ones. We wanted to pick someone from the party you kind of form at the end of the game, which throughout the villages you meet different characters. So, for instance, you go to the fire village and you meet the captain of their military, Jala, but you also meet the village elder, Vakama. He has this assistant guy who's kind of weird, pacing around in the woods, rambling nonsense to himself, Kapura. In every village you meet someone who's kind of like this weird misfit. Yeah. And at the end of the game, you collect them all together to a party to go, like, uh, defend... Actually, to, like, fight off monsters and to defend the tower, which is a really cool twist. Yeah. And uh, in every village you meet one of these people. Tamaru being the one you meet in the jungle village, Lake Horo. Right. You meet two people there. You meet Kongu, who is a... He's a military guy. He's a pilot. And then you meet Tamaru. She is this useless klutz. She, her first introduction... I'll play the clip here. Kongu jumps out of the tree swiftly. Tamaru falls down and lands on her fucking head. <laughs> Hello, just clonks behind him. <laughs> She is afraid of heights, which is great because she lives in the treetops. Yeah. And also, she is a soldier in training under Kongu. Again, great, because this is a military that rides giant birds into battle, and she's afraid <laughs> of heights. So she's terrified of riding these birds into battle because she's up yeah. high in the clouds. So on the first battle you have to partake in, there's this, like, high-speed air battle. 
Kangu gets on the bird. Your character gets on the bird. Tamara tries to climb on it and falls off. My favorite thing is then she just lays there. She just lays there in defeat. Just like, well, I'm done. <laughs> and she doesn't participate in the battle because she's too useless to do it. I know. We actually, like, weren't sure at first who we wanted to pick as the monograph. I really wanted to pick Hafu from the Stone Village of Pokoro. Mm -hmm. His design is great. I'll put a picture on the screen. He's one of my favorite. He might actually be my favorite of your, like, Tijinka designs for them. Oh, thank you. Like, he looks great. He looks yeah. like this, like, really sexy kind of desert man. Yeah, totally. Um, the main reason we didn't go for him is Hafu's whole thing is he is the narcissist. He's an artist who's super full of himself. And it's like, well, we kind of already have the artist with dry skink, and we have the narcissist introduced, like, three episodes ago with Marth. Yeah. It just seemed too close to me. So then the toss-up was between Tepu and Tamaru. Tepu being this, uh dumb muscle kind of himbo guy he's a miner <laughs> from the underground village of onukoro i love him and uh god you want to talk a little about because he's your favorite character Tepu, i i love him so much he's such a fucking himbo he's like the dumbest thing alive but he's so sweet <laughs> he is he's like so wholesome and like friendly yeah. and aggro but like he's an idiot yeah the main reason we settled on tamaru uh over the other two uh, the main reason, actually, is because her hair is this bluish color. I thought it was Santa Alan thumbnails. Looked different from the other mm -hmm. characters. Yeah, definitely. That was actually the single biggest reason. Although it worked out really well. Uh, recently we were recording the Barak animations, which are taking place right after Monog, if you want to see that series. And, uh, Katie made a great observation about Tamaru. Oh yeah, she like fucking takes her mask off and flashes the bow rock, so she's just a nudist now. You just like screamed out like, God, put a shirt on, you fucking nudist! <laughs> <laughs> that so... was her instantaneous reaction. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I guess her taking her mask off is kind of the bionicle equivalent of flashing her boobs yeah. at them. Yeah, exactly. So now Tamaru hates clothes. Yeah, Tamaru's a nudist now. <laughs> so that's just part of her character. And like, great, we don't have any nudists on Treft Island, might as well oh. go with it. Yeah, she just better steer clear of Joe White. Oh god, yeah, please no, Joe White, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that that wasn't part of the decision for introducing Tamaru, but it worked out really well. It, it helped. It helped. It helped a lot. She is one of my favorite characters yeah. in it. Yeah, as much as I love Tepu and his giant abs. She just works better for it. Oh, and in case you're wondering why Tamaru's bio was done in like this broken English, um, that is called Tree Speak. It is a dialect of, I guess, broken English that the jungle people of Lake Koro speak. It fucking sucks. Yeah, that, that bio has been the single most difficult bio to both write and to speak. I give Katie props for saying that. Yeah. No, the hardest part was trying to figure out, like, how to grammatically make, like, how to say this so that it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> so just in case you're wondering why the fuck her bio made no sense, that is why. Yes. I think that's everything I wanted to say about it. Oh, I saw one very small thing to add, not to make this go any longer. My uncle had a reboot in 2015. Fans oh, called yeah. G2. It sucked. Yeah, it sucked. Although I've been collecting G2 sets. They're they're not as cool as the G1 sets. The but... initial wave was kind of cool. The second yeah. wave is kind of garbage. Eh, I agree with that. Although, uh, Katie actually has a Bionicle item rarer than anything I have in my collection. I'll put a mm. picture of her posing with on screen here. I do, yeah. It's like uh, the exclusive Golly mask, which you- Special edition Comic Con mask, 200 mango. Zoom on the number. It says 26 out of 200. Yeah. That is the one Katie has. I know. God damn. I hear the prices those go for online. It's absolutely insane, and I have it, so I feel special. Bionicle shit's fucking expensive. I think it's If you guys have any in your basins or something, sell them on eBay. Oh, yeah, definitely. Or sell them to me. <laughs> that's also an option. All right, well, I think that's everything I want to say about tomorrow. Yeah. Unless you have anything you want to add. I think I'm good. She's adorable. She's so cute. She's such a waifu. Yeah, she is. I mean, be a little careful that she is 16. Oh, yeah, that's true. But also, if the Battle of Bar Magnum takes place two years later, she'd be 18 then. Yes, that's true. And, and also... I don't think you would draw her any differently at 18. No. So she can be a waifu then. No. But for all intents and purposes, we are putting her in Tomodachi Life as 16 because she doesn't really have a strict age. None of the Bionicle characters do. Since Tamaru's kind of like Kongu's apprentice, I kind of envision her as like a teenager. Mm -hmm. So we kind of put that in there when we designed her me. Anyway, I saw Joe White want oh. to make friends, and I swear to God, this is with Tamaru. Oh my God. I swear to God, Joe White. Ahoy there! It is I, Joe White Grouse. Is she gonna flash me her booty? <laughs> I'm gonna go look into her window. Okay. Her booty is all dried out. It is shrivelly and terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's the second time you told me he's not compatible. Yeah. <laughs> Joe White's just here losing all his friends. Oh god. He's best friends with Pooper. Oh my god. All right. Uh, let's. Oh god. So wow. many problems. Many problems. Iris. Iris. What's up, Buttercup? You guys look alike. You've been on vacation or something. I think you're on vacation, sailing on the train at lightning speed. Yeah. 
relationship with Kate seems to Ooh. Oh no. Kate still likes me. I mean, I'm sure she uh, likes you, yeah. but like I feel like her insecurities are getting the better of her. Probably. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, look, who wouldn't like you? Literally, these are my two top two waifus together. Yeah, and they're dating each other. That's great. She also hates her mom. You hate, and her dad. Are you sure it's Kate who's having trouble? <laughs> yeah. She, you <laughs> seem to hate both of your parents right now. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. Jet. What's up with Jet? I, can't I don't want to have a new outfit because I love this outfit on him. I know, right? It has been forever, dude. I'd like some new clothes. Oh, of course. Well, he needs his casual clothes. That's true. He needs... A car shirt. Actually, I feel like that almost fits him, but... Yeah, if nothing oh. else. Oh! Well, that's kind of cool. That's like a Joel shirt. What that? Oh, I like that, too. That's not that casual, though. I like the tank top. Yeah, I like that, too, because, like, Jet totally works out. Yeah. Here you go, Jet. You need it for your punching, but he's been punching in a... Yeah, perfect. Punching in a suit this whole time. He loves it. He's wearing flip-flops. <laughs> kind of say... Uh, this, again, we have so much shit to say about Bionicle. While Katie's pulling up the list of gifts over on the side here... Um, Bionicle has actually become an inspiration for the Windstriders in some ways. Just in the way, like, so Katie was more so inspired by Xenoblade, how uh, Xenoblade is the story that, like, you can find out more about the world. But I've said many times, Xenoblade is just Bionicle but even adults. Oh, Literally, yeah. like, all the fucking story beats are the same. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Telethi or just Borok fight me. 100%. 100%. They even have a fucking character who gets a little glimpse of the future. Yeah, they do. Alright, Jet, time to show off your new outfit. Just don't run on that in your flip flops. <laughs> That might be a little painful. Yeah, that might be dangerous. I feel that. I yeah. feel that, man. Holly. What's wrong, Holly? She's like, Joe White keeps looking through my window at me. <laughs> Tell you him maybe to get... throw him in prison? Tell him to get his eyes out of my window. New clothes. I think Holly needs a thought outfit. Yeah, this is a total thought outfit. Oh my god, there's a hypnotizer on her chest. Uh-oh, she's gotta go to Kate. <laughs> Kate, Kate's just there watching Holly's like... <laughs> Are you staring at my boobs? <laughs> Kate's like, no, I swear I'm not. It's just your hypnosis watch. I drove my mom crazy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> not all that often. I think she'd beg to differ. Yeah, it was all the time. Oh, she's with uh, Iris. Oh, good. The canon couple. Please get together. Yeah, right? Oh, look <laughs> at them playing their Wii U. Big party at Sarah's. <laughs> she's thinking about a dog. She's thinking about Doge. What should I say when I feel down? Sarah has to show off her potty mouth. <laughs> Fuck this, man. Fuck this shit. I got divorced. <laughs> She's always entertaining. <laughs> Alright, let's see. The stink. stink! Hello, have a bone for the stink. Is that you, Ned's I can't recall the last time we talked. Want a cookie. I love his voice. I know. What? Why does a dog... <laughs> I need more cookies. Why would a dog owe someone money? I don't know. <laughs> I bought some, bought some catnip off the local cat. <laughs> oh no. I mean, catnip is basically a drug. We encourage cats to get high. And we we laugh at it. Oh, of course, you little dog. <laughs> Perfect. I swear, the game's AI is so good. He knows he's a dog. I know. Could you give my head a little pat. Those ears aren't floppy enough right. to be him. That's true. Dry skink, you say, like, I hate Neb some more. <laughs> Have you not berated Neb enough for one day? I need to sneeze, but it won't come out. <laughs> oh my god. She has penguins on her wall. I drew those penguins myself. I hid my nose in the picture. Remember, she always draws art of her nose? Oh yeah. <laughs> There's a nose somewhere hidden in it. She always hides it. She, she like, stopped making her nose the focus of it because Ooh. people didn't like it. <laughs> But she still hides her nose in every picture. Maybe like a tree or something because it's shaped like a tree. Yeah, yeah. Tree nose. <laughs> Just her tree nose. Thank you. What a relief. I love her condescending voice. I know. She needs to have a rendition of Little Gold House in here. Oh my god. my friend and all, but I've never lent her any money. Alright, just Neb probably with a funny face or being hungry. Probably. Give me some Brock. I want some little green trees. <laughs> Shut up, Neb. <laughs> oh. oh! I'm surprised. I thought for sure there was going to be like, I need, a fun I, need I need a funny face. Yeah, right? And it was going to be terrible. <laughs> Soap me up, bitch. <laughs> He's so off key. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I want it to happen. 
No, oh, thanks, Neb. <laughs> like Kato, she's wonderful. All right, I'll just check the houses. I think we might be done for the day. Yeah. Oh, it's all quiet over here. Yeah, they're busy talking on the couch. He loves her new dress. She looks so cute in it. He's like, so what do you think about that tomorrow? <laughs> what do you think about that tomorrow, chick? She fell with your Dakota. Seeing up your skirt. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Oh no. All right. Well, if everything's good, I think it's probably a good place to end off this episode. Yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Fabulous Fish. And Katatui 101. See you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.